Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. Hello citizens of the internet. Today I am going to show you how to plot a WHO partograph. Partograph is a predictive tool which is underutilized by the OBGYN community mainly because of lack of knowledge on how to record and plot a partograph. This is my sincere effort to eliminate their apathy towards the use of partograph in labor. Partograph was first introduced by Emmanuel A. Friedman from New York in 1955. It is the graphical analysis of labor for clinical evaluation of the progress of labor. In its simplest form, it plots the dilatation of cervix in centimeters against time in hours. Friedman showed that the pattern of cervical dilatation versus time in hours from the time of onset of labor, that is zero hour of labor, is a sigmoid curve with two phases in the first stage of labor, the latent phase and the active phase. Partograph was further modified by Philpott and Castle in 1972. They added the alert and action lines. They also plotted the descent of head. Furthermore, they emphasized its clinical application. I am going to talk in depth about the WHO partograph. Based on multicentric trials conducted in Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand, World Health Organization has published a model composite partograph in 1994 for developing countries. The original partograph has been modified to make it simpler and easier to use. Although WHO recommends mandatory use of partogram, recent Cochrane database review issue 4 October 2008 has failed to establish this, except for resource poor situations. WHO partogram has following modified features. Latent phase has been removed. The latent phase should last no longer than 8 hours. Active phase commences at 4 cm cervical dilatation. During active phase, the rate of cervical dilatation should not be slower than 1 cm per hour. A lag time of 4 hours between a slowing of labor and the need for intervention is unlikely to compromise the fetus or the mother and avoids unnecessary intervention such as caesarean section. WHO partograph has three components. At the top, fetal condition is recorded. It comprises fetal heart rate, memories, their presence and absence, liker, color, and molding of fetal skull. The progress of labor is represented in the middle. It comprises cervical dilatation, descent of fetal head, and uterine contractions, their duration and frequency per 10 minutes. The third component is maternal condition which is shown at the bottom. It comprises pulse, blood pressure, temperature, urine that is its volume, presence or absence of albumin or acetone, any drugs given or IV fluids are recorded here and oxytocin drip rate is also recorded. The alert line begins at 4 cm dilatation and extends to a point of expected full dilatation that is 10 cm. It represents a rate of dilatation of 1 cm per hour. The first dilatation reading is always plotted on the alert line. When labor progress is normal, plotting of dilatation remains on the alert line or to its left. If it moves to the right of the line, labor may be prolonged. In this situation, if facilities for assessment of the cause and its prompt correction are not available, the woman should be transferred to a tertiary care facility. The alert line is also known as the health facility line because as long as labor progress remains inside this line, woman can be kept in the primary care center or hospital. The action line is parallel and 4 hours to the right of the alert line. If labor is not following the expected course, 
the plot of her labor will begin to approach the action line signaling the need to make management decision that is critical assessment of the cause of delay and to take appropriate action such as cesarean section in a tertiary care hospital the action line is also referred to as the hospital line because by the time labor progress retards to this stage the woman must receive appropriate management action in a tertiary care hospital indications for plotting a partogram are all primary gravidas high risk pregnancies such as gestational hypertension preeclampsia diabetes in pregnancy etc mal positions such as occipito posterior position and mal presentations such as breach given a trial of vaginal delivery trial of labor in borderline contracted pelvis cases and previous cesarean section case given a trial of labor when should one start plotting a who partograph plotting should ideally be started when the woman enters the active stage of labor that is when she has one or more regular uterine contractions per 10 minutes and cervical dilatation is 4 cm or more it is crucial to plot the first reading in its proper place this is important because it is not explained in most medical textbooks and therefore health workers do not know this when the woman arrives in the latent phase time of admission and record is zero time on the graph when the admission takes place in the active phase the cervical dilatation that is the first reading is immediately plotted on the alert line usually only one health worker should be entering the information until the patient delivers patient should be examined serially at specific intervals by the same observer for recording different parameters now i'm going to discuss how to plot each parameter of partogram first i will discuss how often to observe the parameter and then how to plot it on the partogram paper first record the initial patient information such as her date and time of admission name gravity parity in patient or hospital number and the time of rupture of membranes how to plot cervical dilatation vaginal examination is done at admission and then every 4 hours and the findings are plotted in appropriate square the main part of the partograph is the graph in the center to the left of the graph are numbers 1 to 10 against squares each square represents 1 cm dilatation along the bottom of the graph are numbers 0 to 24 Each square represents one hour. The dilatation of cervix is plotted with a small x. How to assess and plot descent of head? Descent of head is assessed by abdominal palpation and not by pelvic examination. It refers to how much of the fetal head in one fifth is palpable in the abdomen above the pubic symphysis. On the left of the graph is the word descent with numbers 5 to 0. Descent is recorded as small o at the same time as every vaginal examination. Presence or absence of membranes and color of amniotic fluid is recorded at each vaginal examination. Membranes are recorded as i if membranes are intact and a if membranes are absent. It is recorded as C if the amniotic fluid is clear, M if it is meconium stained, and B if it is blood stained. Uterine contractions are observed and recorded every 30 minutes. They are plotted as number of contractions in a 10-minute period. Their duration is recorded in seconds. A visual key for recording contractions is as follows: a square with dot represents uterine contractions less than 20 seconds duration a square with dashes represents uterine contractions of 20 to 40 seconds duration and a black box represents contractions greater than 40 seconds below the timeline are five blank squares 
going across the entire length of the paragraph. Each square represents one uterine contraction. How to measure and plot fetal heart rate? With the patient in left lateral position, count the fetal heart sounds for full one minute just after the contraction has passed. Take fetal heart sounds every 15 minutes. If abnormal over three observations, appropriate action must be taken. If electronic fetal heart rate monitoring is done, the mean basal rate is recorded. Fetal heart sounds are recorded on the top part of the paragraph every 30 minutes, although they are actually checked every 15 minutes. If oxytocin augmentation is done, record the amount and drip rate every 30 minutes. Record any additional drugs such as antibiotics if given. How to record maternal condition? Record maternal pulse every 30 minutes and mark it as a dot and blood pressure every 4 hours. It is marked in up and down arrows and temperature every 2 hours. Measure urine sample for amount, albumin and acetone from time to time. Molding of fetal head is also recorded. It is the extent to which the cranial wall bones overlap and indicates the degree to which the head is compressed as it passes through the bony pelvic cavity. Excessive molding is an indication of obstructed labor, possibly due to cephalopelvic disproportion. Molding is recorded on a scale of 0 to plus 3. 0 indicating no molding and plus 3 indicating excessive molding. To make the partograph visually appealing and easily decipherable, we use color coding for plotting the readings. Plot the X of dilatation using a green color pen. As more readings are taken, the X points are joined with a straight green color line. Plot the O of descent of head using a red color pen. As more readings are taken, the O points are joined with a red straight line. All other parameters are recorded using black ink pen. Some important points to remember. When the woman comes in active stage of labor, the first recording of cervical dilatation is made on the alert line. But what if the patient comes in the latent phase of labor? If she is admitted in the latent phase, plotting can be done. However, when she goes into the active stage before 8 hours have elapsed, plotting must be moved to the alert line by a broken line as shown here. The advantages of partogram are as follows. It has a predictive value. The main value of partogram is its ability to estimate the expected time of delivery if labor is normal. In dysfunctional labor, it serves as early warning of impending problems. Delay in labor can be detected early and timely correction is possible. Partogram is an objective record of labor findings. It serves as a straightforward record of all the events of labor which can be seen at a glance. This facilitates handover formalities when staffs change duties. It is useful for statistical analysis of labor problems. It also has a medical legal value. With the help of partogram, it is easy to defend oneself in a case of dispute in court. It simplifies transfer of labor patients to tertiary care centers. In conclusion, I will say that poor utilization of partograph is seen in most public health institutions and hospitals. This reflects poor monitoring of mothers in labor and may re result in poor pregnancy outcome. For further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology, refer to the following book written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology 
clinical cases in obstetrics, questions and answers. Clinical cases in gynecology, questions and answers. And pelvic reconstructive surgery. If you have found this video useful and informative, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here.